Hello, viewers. Um, I welcome you to this program, Everything Catholic. We are glad to have you join us to watch it, to talk about the faith of the church, the church's doctrines, the laws of the church, church governance, anything and everything Catholic is subject to discussion in this program. And my name is Reverend Father Silvanus Ame of the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja, and I'll be anchoring this program together with my brother, Reverend Father Reverend Boniface. Boniface. Boniface Nebo is a priest of the Archdiocese of Abuja also. And today, on this first episode of the program, we shall be um, beginning from the very beginning of everything about our Christian life and faith, which is the faith. And today, our subject of reflection and discussion is divine revelation. With us in the studio to talk about this program, about this topic, is Reverend Father Solomon Uko, also a priest of the Kali Kat, that was about Buja, and um, the Dean of Buari Dinari. Father, you are most welcome. Thank you very much, Father. We are glad to have you with us. And um, as I have mentioned, we'll be discussing today on divine revelation to talk about the beginning of our whole life and faith as Christians. So, today, we want to begin by looking at the creed, which is the summation of the faith of the believer. And um, Father, we welcome you again. And very briefly, please, could you just help us have a clear understanding of what this thing, creed, is all about? Thank you very much once again, fathers, for this wonderful initiative. I want to congratulate the two of you for Thank you, putting Father. this together. Uh, I want to pray that God will help you to sustain Amen. the program. Amen. And I'm granting you the grace to continue to do what you're doing for the good of the church and the people of God. Um, I want to also appreciate the fact that you've invited me to be part of this uh, wonderful beginning. We are glad mm -hmm. to have you. So thank you so much for this privilege. Thank you for I coming. appreciate it. The church is about faith, it's about belief. And that is why we have the creed. The creed, like you've said already, is a summation of what we hold on to dear as children of God. So, in a nutshell, that is what the creed is. It's a summation of our faith, what we profess, what we believe, what we hold on to that is very dear to ourselves, to our soul, and everything that we are made of. All right, thank you, Father. Um, when we talk about the faith, we are looking at the foundation of human relationship between man and God. Because um, faith is that basis upon which we accept that there is God. But how do we even know that there is God? The world itself is a mystery. Humanity is a mystery. We can't completely comprehend everything there is in life. So the human person, there is so much to seek, there is so much to pursue, there is so much that we are yearning to know. Uh, but we just discovered at the point that we are. You know, you know that at the point you were not, at the point you are. So there must be something that is responsible for your being. You know, those days in philosophy, a lot of beingness, the ease of every existent reality. So, um, there is a reason why man has to continue to seek. And seeking is to get understanding. And it's through this process that we get to appreciate more who we are. But to say that we're going to reach that point that we can say, okay, this is God, and uh, this is not God, yes, we may not get it completely right. But the fact is that God, in his infinite goodness, has also instilled in humanity the ability to yearn and to seek and to know bit of these mysteries for which he unveiled himself to humanity. And that is practically why we have the creed. There is indeed some being that is responsible for my being. And that gives me opportunity to seek to know him. And this is what we call experience with God. Thank you very much, Father. Mm. Implicitly, at the foundation of this belief, therefore, is faith. Sure. Now, for some, of course, for the church, 
It is a compendium of our belief, that is the creed, with all of the articles and the contents. Could you briefly tell us the, the structure and the nature of the creed of the church? The creeds of the church are divided into segments, the sections, and um, we are looking at the very beginning, which is I believe. You know, that is the starting point. Yeah. And you might just have to accept because when we see the definition of faith itself, and what is faith, the church tells us that faith is a supernatural gift from God, Absolutely. which enables us to believe without doubting. I have to stress that word, without doubting. Whatever God has revealed. And so, uh, the structure of our faith begins from that very foundation, that I believe. Because there are some persons who do not believe. And um, they have the freedom not to believe. But I accept that there is God means I have been gifted with that privilege. And so I don't take it for granted that some persons may not have been given that privilege. So for us here is to begin to you know, uh, dwell on that foundation and move ahead to help us grow in this faith that God has endowed us with. Now you, 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 you mentioned the, what faith is, a gift from God which enables us to believe. And if you look at scriptures, almost all of the time it is God who reveals himself. Like from Genesis chapter 3 verse 9, God, the Bible says God came walking in the garden and then he called Adam. In his uh, dealings with other people to the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, the prophets, God is the one who reveals himself. Is it, not, is it possible for man to know God without God initiating the process of that relationship? Now, we have started on this level, means that we, to some extent, implicitly we have agreed that there is a God. And because my being, I'm not responsible for who I am. Initially, from the very beginning, I'm not the one that brought myself into being. You know, it's like what St. Augustine says. He says, the God who created you without your knowledge, without your consent, okay? You need to get that. Without your consent, we cannot save you without your cooperation. But you know, we are talking now like people of faith. <laughs> yes. We are talking like people of faith. But what about people who do not believe? Because the creed begins with, I believe, like you said. What about people who do not have that faith, who do not believe that there is God? Is it possible to know God without the aid of faith? God, you know, faith, faith, is, faith is a big word that brings to belief. You can know something without believing in it. There are some persons... Yeah. who may want to know better because they are obstinate in their ways and faith is about freedom it's about willingness it's about the fact that I on my own having gotten that grace accept because God like we have learned so far does not force himself on human being so there are persons whom we call atheists who do not believe but there are indications all around even in nature that portray the fact that there is a supernatural being. There is something that is responsible for the beingness of being of the world. So I, I don't condemn. I'm not here to begin to castigate. So why can't they be like me? No, because I know it's a gift. Okay. And um, some person may not have been gifted. Now, picking up from this understanding, of course, you know, you don't faith, you don't first believe on yeah. others. Yeah. Now, God naturally Himself seeks to draw man closer to himself always. Mm -hmm. In response to this, man has a responsibility of taking this up in faith. What becomes of the faith of an atheist, for instance, who would not want to, you know, take this belief? Is it resistance to God's invitation? Can we take it that way? Father, you can put it that way. Because from nature and from everything that is around us, um, for one to hold on tenaciously to the fact that everything begins and ends with me, I, as like I said before, it's not my place to judge. The Lord knows why it is so. So mine is just to keep on trying. If I have to encounter such persons, to help them see whether they can come to something of a realization of the fact that there's something responsible for who you are. At a point you were not. At a point you are. There will be a time you will not be where you are at the moment. So that. I should feel to help persons to, you know, understand. But I always, always have that at the back of my mind that faith is gift. I recall when Jesus um, talked about faith 
linking it to little ones in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 25. He said, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children, to infants. You know, sometimes uh, most of the persons we see that are so called atheists are those who have so into studies. There are great minds, intellectuals. intellectuals, who feel that there is a loss of the sense of God. Yes, they have lost their the life. They don't think that every, everything is about here. I have risen to that point that there is nothing that should be beyond verifiable empirical evidence that I should hold on to tenaciously. And so they come to that kind of level. So what do you do? You leave it to God who has the final say. I will continue to pray for them. <laughs> continue to pray for them. <laughs> Thank you very much, Father. Now the church herself teaches you know, that man by nature and in his being has a religious vocation and from this understanding he's coming from god his journey is having proceeded from god who will still journey back to god he lives a fully human life only if he freely lives by this understanding that he knows and he comes from a source and absolutely will return back to that source of course, for as many who have this faith and this belief that in God we truly move, we live, and we have the entirety of our being. What would be your you know, advice, recommendation to keep on pressing on, especially as we journey through this world? Uh, for each of us that are created in the image and likeness of this wonderful God that we call upon, uh, it gives us the opportunity of radically unveiling himself to us the grace to be able to live our lives to the fullest, enjoying all that he has brought into this world, and eventually um, having the privilege of eternity with him in his kingdom. Yeah. That is what we are called to hold on to as believers, as Christians, and people of faith. We have great examples through the scriptures that we can um, look on to that will aid us in our journey. Our father in faith, Abraham, Genesis chapter 15, chapter 12 he was called and he left everything that he knew and journeyed with the Lord even when he did not understand everything at that moment. It's an example of great faith and the Lord you know, looked at him and was impressed with his level of faith and today we look at him as somebody that we can hold on to as our father yeah. in faith. So uh, our journey is to keep on moving on knowing that there will be a time that the Lord will certainly call us to himself. Uh, look at somebody like Paul as well, St. Paul, at the eve of his life, writing yeah. to yeah. Timothy in 2 Timothy. Yeah. He said, I have fought the good fight. Yeah. I have the run run the rest. I have <laughs> kept the faith. He said, I have kept the faith. And what is left now is to receive the crown of glory that is not just for me, but for all those who expect the Lord's appearing. So, Christians are called to journey like that, grow every day, in God's grace and faith and move eventually to his kingdom. Okay, so let us come back to the matter of the creed, right? Um, we hear of the Apostles' Creed. We also hear of the Nicene Creed. What actually is the difference between the two? Uh, the Apostles' Creed, like you just said, is about the Apostles. The faith of the Apostles, the summation of all that the Apostles taught. So they composed the Creed, Com the Apostles' Creed? It, not necessarily. It's a summation. It's a gathering of the faith of the apostles. Okay. And then put into a creed that we profess. We recite. The different, there is not much difference between the two because uh, this one is an extension. You see, the mysteries of God keeps them building. It's an extension of the Nicene Creed, is an extension of the apostles' creed because it comes after two councils of the church the councils of Constantinople and the council of Nicaea. So t t together they are brought into being and form what we call the Nicene Creed. Yeah. So the Nicene Creed is an expansion, so to speak, of the Apostles' Creed. Very so well, Father. If, if, if some councils of the church composed the Nicene Creed, what about the Apostles' Creed? How did that come to be? Yeah, you, know, you know, most of what we, what's, what we have in the church, including even the scriptures, the scripture is a product of the church. Okay. The, right. Bible, the Bible. The Bible is... Um, uh, it's a library of books and um, is the canon that we are admitted by our forefathers in faith 
we have to sit down to decide which one is canonical and which, which one, one should be believed and which one should not. And so it's a summation of that. So we have the, script, the Bible and uh, that's something that we can hold on to. Uh, I think we'll look at it in that light. The Apostles' Creed, looking at the teachings of the Apostles, those who had the privilege of interacting with Christ and those who wrote the scriptures and then together they had to sit and then brought this for us to hold on to as articles that we can profess in the church. All right, um, thank you. We shall go on a short break very quickly and when we come back we continue our discussion on divine revelation, talking about the creed and our faith in God, how God comes to us and how we get to know God. Do um, join us briefly. Very briefly. Everything Catholic, a program that discusses anything and everything about the Catholic Church. Faith, doctrines, morals, canon law, church governance, papal documents, you name it. As long as it is Catholic, it shall be discussed. Join Father Amir Sivanus and Father Nabo Boniface, two priests passionate about teaching the true faith of the Catholic Church, as their hosts bishops, priests, religious and distinguished laymen and women, to discuss and simplify the wealth of the church's teachings. Everything Catholic, showing on Catholic television, CTV. Everything Catholic, teaching the faith. All right, welcome back. This is the program Everything Catholic. Before we went on break, we were um, discussing on divine revelation, uh, faith in God, and about the creed. And we still have with us in the studio, Very Reverend Father Solomon Uko, who is our guest for today. And um, we shall pick up where we left and continue in the discussion. So, Father, you were uh, talking about the um, composition of the creed. And you, you, you said, you said uh, all the articles of the faith of the apostles put together formed what we now have as the apostles' Apostolic. creed. And then... They were expatiated further into the Nicene Creed. Okay. And um, we have several elements contained in that creed, both the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. What the would you the say articles. are the sources of those elements? Scripture or tradition? <laughs> or a mixture of both? I think you already answered the question because uh, yeah. uh, scripture is a foundation because we have it written out. But the oral tradition is there as well in our church, and uh, the challenges come and the church is able to settle. You know, like in Acts of the Apostles, uh, there was the problem of the uh, the problem that led to the council, the first council of Jerusalem, you recall, okay. yeah. and that led. So that was to settle an issue. Uh, the Nicene Creed also had a problem that led to it. Led to it as well. Right, yeah. uh, apart from the basic articles that were there, so in trying to resolve a problem, it has to be brought into the face so that people can hold on to. There was this particular priest who was very heretic in his teaching and uh, about the person of Jesus who? and Heros, okay. and so that also headed in the composition of that. Uh, Nicene Creed to the point that Jesus is God, Jesus is man. Okay. Thank you very much, Father. Well, I heard it clearly said, you know, foundationally there was the Apostolic Creed. Then the Nicene Creed came after, consequent upon a problem that was to be resolved. And you mentioned a, a particular priest called Arius. What was the particular problem that, that needed to be addressed and from it to this composition called the Nicene Creed? came out. Uh, what was his major challenge? His teaching, his teaching was uh, out of what um, uh, the church does not accept. You know, he, he, he came, came out postulating about the person of Jesus, of, of being only uh, God and not man. Okay, that means he had yeah. problem believing the true nature of, of Christ. So he had serious problem with that. And, um, and he had so much followers. The point that they almost divided the church. Yeah. So the church yeah. had to call yeah. a council and decide to resolve and, resolve yeah. and go to the fact that Jesus had two natures. The nature of man, the nature of God. So that is incorporated 
into the Nicene Creed that you may not find in the Apostolic Creed because it was not a problem then. Yeah. It, it didn't come up as a major issue at, yes. at that time. Yes. So you see, God gradually unbooze himself in this way to us, his children, uh, for our understanding and appreciation of his person. Okay, thank you very much, Father. Um, I'll take us back to the creed again. It has come down to us who are believers today, who are holding firmly to it today and professing it. I think that is literally called transmission. What are the ways by which this creed has, can be transmitted rather? Or are transmitted. It's already a body of faith doctrine that is um, well documented. You know, the beautiful thing about our church, we have dogmas okay. and uh, okay. documents Doctrines, that are there. Yeah. So, aside those who are not even able to read with daily profession, going to church, teaching our little ones, yeah. incorporating the faith into them, they're able to understand. And like what you're doing, which I'm so impressed with. Thank um, you. Finding avenues to explicate the faith and let people appreciate more what we treasure. So these are the means by which we uh, pass on the doc doctrine of our church, the faith of our people from one generation to the other. So since um, the matter of the faith is about divine revelation, God revealing himself to man and we, as we have mentioned in the course of this discourse, God comes to man and reveals himself. Man accepts God in faith. But we also have instances of private revelations, like visions, apparitions, and all of those. Can they also um, be considered to be articles of faith in the strict sense of articles of faith? Uh, you call it articles of faith because it comes out from a, the gathering of church men and perhaps women having time to have serious discourse, deliberation prayerfully, and then coming out with um, you know serious um, articulation of these uh, articles, dogmas, and doctrines. God still reveals Himself to man in various ways. Yeah. Through dreams, through visions, visions. Yeah. through yeah. apparitions, those are accepted. <coughs> those are appreciated. That's right. We know that our God is dynamic and is alive. So those are all appreciated by the church, and they are they have their place in church. They have their place in worship. They have their place in devotion. But when it has to do with article, article of faith, it is something that must is not left to. Uh, personal uh, devotions and visions. These are doctrines. These are articles that have to be seriously sat upon and articulated by the church. So what about private revelations that have been officially recognized by the church? For example, the Fatima apparition. Can, can those ones also be termed as articles of faith? Can they be termed as a basis for faith? Faith is a big word. It's bigger than what we are discussing at the moment. Faith is bigger. You know, you can um, different kinds of faith. We can. What we're talking about is more of um, uh, uh, faith that has to do with knowledge. Faith that has to do with the opposite of the faith. So, what the Fatima children, for instance, experience, it can be termed faith. Is a way that God wants His children to get to appreciate Him through our Blessed Mother Mary more and more. They can be yeah. same faith. But what I insist on here is the body of the knowledge of God's articles in faith. Creed. The word is creed. Okay. Uh, it's different from private revelations. Now, Father, on the final note, um, we have been thinking about revelation, revelation, revelation. Now, prior to the incarnation, that is John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14. God has always shown himself through signs, symbols, the priests, prophets, and kings that ruled his people. Now, I told that in the fullness of time, he came himself through the Son, and that is Christ the Lord. Now, after Christ, is there a possibility of any revelation, or are there ways God has continued to show himself? Very briefly, please. Uh, Jesus is the, the finality of God's revelation. Everything we need to know about God is revealed in Christ. That has to be known. Interesting. 
that has to be known that Jesus is the finality of God's revelation. Okay. We are not expecting any other revelation. Private revelation, yes, those ones are ways of personal interaction with the divine. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Maybe we'll yes. just um, stop it at that. We'll take one last question. So we don't have much time anymore. Um, there seems to be a, a, a parallel kind of way of looking at the matter of faith by faith, religion and science. Uh, is there any point of intersection how, where those two meet in the search and the knowledge of God? Very briefly, pick so Every, that we. God, God is the honor of everything there is in the world, including the scientist and every discovery or uh, verification he, he seeks. Good. So that alone brings you know the interjection that God owns the he theologians, yes. the scientists. He the means the scientist as well. Yes, that's true. And it's true because everything that is is already there. It's just discovery. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much, Reverend Father Solomon Nuko, for joining us in this program today. That will be all we'll be able to take on the program today, Everything Catholic. We thank you for uh, making the time to join us. We hope to see you again next week. And until then, please stay safe, stay well, and may God bless you all.